Uh, we've got here to my left, co-offensive coordinator Ty Howell, co-offensive coordinator Jaywan Sider, quarterback Drew Aller, and running back Nicholas Singleton. Uh, we'll, we'll just do a quick round of opening statements. Coaches, if you would just comment on getting to Atlanta, settling into bowl week, and how preparations have been going so far. Yeah, we, we've had a great uh, week of prep so far. Um, guys are working hard, uh, really carrying down the things that we were doing up in State College. And it's been awesome down here at Atlanta. The bowl has been first class and uh, taking care of us, been having some great events and uh, time with the team and, and fellowship with each other. So we really appreciate and and uh, have been happy to be down here in Atlanta. All right, Coach Sire? I echo that sentiment. Um, the hospitality has been awesome. Uh, being from the South, to be able to come back South again for myself, been awesome. See family, friends, and you know, for the players, we try to get down here for a whole week so they have a, a normal routine throughout the week so it's not different from them because we all creature habits, and so it's good to let the guys be normal. All right. Uh, for you guys, for Drew and Nicholas, talk about talk about the the bowl week experience so far and the of the events that you've guys you guys have gotten to do and maybe what's your favorite event so far. Yeah, it's been a really fun week already. Uh, this is my first time down here in Atlanta, so it's a completely different environment to what I what I grew up in uh, in the north. So, uh, favorite event so far probably did the go karting from last night. Uh, that, was, that was super fun. Uh, just being able to spend time with the teammates um, away from the field has been just really cool. Uh, getting to bond with everybody, um, no matter the position. So that's been the best part so far. Yeah, um, it's been good so far coming to Atlanta uh, for a bowl game. It's been amazing. Um, probably my favorite part is probably the arcade games, um, laser tag. Um, me and my teammates have fun with that. So like the whole experience has been so, so good so far. All right, thanks, guys. All right, go ahead and uh, raise your question or <laughs> raise your question. Raise your hand. We'll get you a microphone, get some questions going here. All right, let's go right here in the front row on the aisle first. Hey guys, we um, talked to James about this yesterday, but playing in the Peach Bowl can kind of give you momentum heading into the next season. We saw that with the Rose Bowl, specifically you, Nick, we talked about that. But when you guys look at the opportunity in front of you, some younger guys could step up. Um, I know for, for both the tight ends and the running backs, there's a lot of players who can make some con contributions here. What do you take away from a bowl game that can kind of propel you into 2024? It doesn't have to be all four of you, but it, whoever wants to answer that. <laughs> All right. Uh, I mean, the biggest thing for us is just sending these seniors out the right way uh, because they've provided us so much uh, from being like the younger guys the past two years and provided us with just great examples how to live as a Penn State football player on and off the field um, and how to carry ourselves. So first thing and the most important thing is sending these guys out the right way. Um, and just giving them a high note to end their Penn State career on. And then obviously uh, just go out as an offense and execute the game plan the coaches have been to putting together the past uh, like month or so, whatever. We found out the game was um, against. And you know just go out and execute it to the best of our abilities and then just let that catapult us into next year. All right, coaches, you want to give that a shot? I mean, at the end of the day, it's about finishing the job. And uh, our job is not finished. We get one more opportunity to go play to be around this great group of young men and, and watch them finish their career, some of the seniors that's not going to be back. Um, so it's for us, it's exciting to, to, to finish what we started, but also to springboard us into next year and kind of find out the foundation of who we're going to be going forward and, uh, and try to reach our goals next year. All right, next question. We'll go on the left side, halfway back. Ty, uh, Tyler made his announcement a couple days ago that he was going to come back next year. Um, you know, for you as his position coach, what was it like going through that process with him, and what does it mean to you to have him back for 2024? Yeah, obviously excited to have him back, um, not just because of his talent and, and all those things, but from a leadership standpoint, a guy that's played a lot of football for us. Um, as far as going through the process, you know, just trying to help guide him and help him make the best decision for himself. Because at the end of the day, it's his decision. And, and uh, you know, you want him to be happy whichever way it went. Um, you know, so that was the big key, you know, for me in, in, in helping him is like, look, man, here's the pros, here's the, here's the cons to all the, all the different uh, scenarios. And, you know, so obviously super happy that he's back, um, not just from a football standpoint, but from getting to be around him for another year and, and uh, coach him. He's, he's a, a pleasure to coach and great kid and works his tail off. So um, obviously excited to have him back. Over here, second row on the left. 
Uh, Ty and J1, how, how is having these offensive co coordinator roles sort of compared to how you thought it was going to be when you got you know that opportunity? And with this being sort of your last game in that role, unseriously to a degree, is there a temptation to call that play on the back of the book that you've always wanted to actually see run? And now you've got one last chance to do it. I think uh, for the most part, me and Ty have always been working hand in hand since we've been here. Um, so was, a lot of it is not new. Now it's just been on the front end, be able to call some plays and. You know, anytime we put anything new, we both approve it. You know, it's not like, hey, I like this, but he don't like it. So we, we mutually agree on what we like, but also not just what we like, what these guys like. You know, at the end of the day, it's about trying to get them a chance to be successful and giving them opportunity to attack defense the way we want to, vertical, horizontal, you know what I mean? So, and then get the ball in these guys' hand and let them play in between the tackles. So, um, you got anything else? Yeah, I'd, I'd echo everything J1 said. I mean, obviously, um, moving into that role, there's some some duties that you didn't previously have to do, but uh, you know it's been great, obviously, with us both kind of seeing things through the same set of eyes, and it's made the transition easy, um, you know, and and just you know hopefully we left all of our uh, bad plays at home and got our good plays on the sheet. So, but uh, there's really no temptation to call something that's been sitting there. But uh, you know, biggest thing trying to go out and, and win this bowl game and send our seniors out right. All right, right here in the front row on the right, please. Hey, Ty. Hey, J1. Um, this question's for both of you. I, obviously, with a lot of change over the last couple of days or whatnot, but have you had time to sit down and kind of iron out your offensive, you know, philosophies, maybe a couple principles that you want to instill with the team? Coach, I'll start with you. Yeah, you know, um, I think that's something that we really thought about uh, when this transition happened, you know, what we want it to look like. And, and the first thing that we thought about was players. You know, not not plays. You know, um, who are the guys that are going to help us win? And being able to take advantage of their things that they do well, and uh, you know, and put them in the positions to to do those things. Um, and I think you know, with offensive philosophy, that's that's where you got to start um, because not every team looks the same every year. You know, and a team doesn't look the same at the beginning of the year as it does at the end of the year. So starting with players and not plays has kind of been our, our philosophy. And then allowing those guys to, to go play fast and execute um, has been the big keys for us. I'm going to echo what Ty said. Um, you know, our model since we took over been simplicity equals speed. And what that means is, hey, we, want, we don't want these guys thinking. We want them to go play. We recruited well. We've got great talent. And the worst thing they can do is go into a game thinking of, I should, I could, I would be doing instead of just going reacting to what the defense do and then taking advantage of our skill and, and allow Drew to operate run the ball and take advantage of our tight ends and, and then try to get the ball on the perimeter to our wide receivers. So like Ty said, it's not plays, it's players. In the day you win games by the, the kids that you got on the field and not what you think as a play caller. All right, next we'll go second row right on the aisle. Hi guys, this one's for Drew. Uh, obviously, watched Sean prepare for the Rose Bowl last year, and what was his swan song? What did you learn from watching him, and how have you tried to uh, work on that yourself this year with Peach Bowl? Yeah, I mean, I learned a lot from Cliff last year. Uh, he's definitely a great mentor to me last year in the whole quarterback room, and I think the whole offensive uh, offensive unit too. Um, I mean, the biggest thing with bowl prep is just getting your body right from the end of the season. Uh, just because, you know, it's a long physical season and you endure a lot. Everybody has bumps and bruises by the end of it. So getting your body back right and to 100% is the most important thing. And then just, um, you know, being able to just sit down and maybe break down your performance throughout the season, but then also uh, get ahead on whoever you're, you're playing in this bowl game. I mean, we've been preparing um, as an offense for, the, for this game for probably like at least four, four weeks already. So I think we've had a, laid a good foundation from uh, when we were back in State College, and then we've continued to build off that this week. So, you know, just taking it day by day, and never never looking too far into the future is probably the biggest thing I learned from him last year. All right, we'll go next uh, second row here on the left. This is for Nick and Drew. Uh, simplicity equals speed. You guys have said that a lot. I'm sure that's a that's, that, that 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 was a, an emphasis for you guys uh, mid November. What what does that mean to you guys, and how have how have Coach Howell and Coach Sider kept things simple for you guys? All right. Nicholas, let's start with you this time. Yeah, um, Coach Sider, Coach um, Howell has been doing a good job ever since they got the job as OC, as co-OC, I should say. But, you know, um, they've been saying it the whole week, man, simplicity equals speed. Um, just playing fast, not think too much, you know, because 
ever since then we've been just playing fast and just not thinking and just playing the game. So we've been doing good. Yeah, I mean, I echo what Nick said. I think uh, Coach Sider and Coach Howell have done a great job of just, you know, giving us simple rules to follow, uh, not giving us too many looks or not too many rules and thinking of, like for receivers, thinking about a certain leverage, like, oh, they could do this, but they should do that. It's just you're running the route this way. Um, and th that allows the, those guys to play fast. Uh, same with the tight ends and that that aspect of route running. And that, that made my job a lot easier just because I think, you know, the, the timing and communication got on like a different level because I was able to anticipate more what, you know, everybody was doing out on the perimeter. And I think that's where the sim simplicity equals speed from that standpoint. And then uh, for the running backs, Nick and Katron, I think we like the O-line just playing fast and it's given Nick and uh, Katron just easy reads and they're able to just get their foot in the ground, cut up field and make guys miss in the hole and uh, just let their talent take over. So I think that's where simplicity equals speed comes in for us. All right, we'll go next uh, front row all the way to the left. Uh, this is for Drew and for Nick. Uh, both uh, Drew, for you, this will be your first time in a starring role in a bowl game. How do you approach that? How cool, how special is that for you? Yeah, obviously this is a great opportunity, not only for me, but the whole team. Um, we, we've been talking about it the whole, the whole uh, bowl, bowl prep. Uh, if, we, if we win this game, we're the first team ever in college history to win all six uh, New, Year's, New Year's Bowls game, and we don't take that lightly. Um, and again, we want to send the seniors out the right way because of how much they've given to this program and how much they've sacrificed throughout their career to get the program to this point. So, uh, I mean, for me, it's just it's, it's just another game. I'm not taking it any, any differently. Um, I'm taking it very seriously and just have another opportunity to go out and play the game that I love to play. And Nick, for you, you were in a starring role in the Rose Bowl last year. You had some big runs. Does that experience help you moving forward into this game? Yeah, I feel like it does. Um, but, you know, I always take every game just as another game. I don't look at other teams like like how big they are. But, you know, Ole Miss is a good team. Um, we're excited to play. Um, like um, Drew said, we have a chance to make history, um, be a first team to win six um, New Year's Six Bowls wins. So, like, we're trying to do that. So, yeah. All right, we'll go next here, row three on the corner. Yep. Hey, how are you guys doing? Um, Tyler Downey from Lions 24-7. Um, this goes for all of you. I'd appreciate if anyone could answer it. Um, Harrison Wallace was back on the practice field we saw yesterday. Just wondering what it has looked like with Harrison involved again with you guys. And if he is able to compete, what does he do for this offense with his addition, re-addition, I should say? I think that's a good Drew answer. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, having Trey back is, is something that the offense needs. I think he brings a lot of positivity to that room. He's a very consistent receiver. Um, obviously, as we all know, he's a very explosive receiver uh, vertically. And um, I mean, I think he just brings a great work ethic to that room again, uh, now that he's back healthy. Um, but as far as a playing standpoint, that's a, that's a Coach Franklin thing. And I'm not going <laughs> to, that's a Coach Franklin and Trey decision. So I, I don't have any input on that. All right, coaches, you want to weigh in? I think Drew said it perfectly. Okay, <laughs> Drew, Drew covered that. All right, we'll go fourth row on the left over here. Yeah, for, for Ty and Jaywan, uh, yeah, James has emphasized not having a lot of opt-outs, and it seems like you guys are, are pretty intact going to this for you two in terms of putting together a game plan and trying to fit these pieces together. Yeah, does that make it easier? What, what's that process like knowing that you have kind of a full deck at this point in the year? Yeah, I think anytime there's continuity, um, it, it helps, you know, the, the offense um, as a whole, not just the, the coordinators. Um, you know, so that's obviously been big for us and allowing us to keep building on the things that we were doing there at the end of the season. Because um, obviously, you know, the one thing that's a little different in a bowl game is you have a lot more time to prepare. Um, so being able to, you know, give these guys multiple different looks on the things that you're going to run and, and those things, um, that continuity of having your guys there, they've seen a lot of that. Um, so from that standpoint, it's been great to, to have all those guys uh, playing. I, mean, I just echo Ty. I mean, we, we, we do a good job all year developing guys. Uh, we have a motto, next man up. Um, so we sub a lot. So we got a lot of guys with experience. Uh, it's good to have a, our nucleus back so we really don't change our, our thought process of how we game plan. End of the day, it start with what these guys do best and what our guys up front can block best. So that's how we kind of divide up the, the game plan, and then we try to go attack defense. All right, we're going to go all the way in the back. 
Hey, this is for Coach Howell and Sider. Uh, you guys have had Coach K now in the in the rooms for a couple weeks now. How much have you bounced ideas in your preparation for this bowl game off him? I know his job is to kind of sit in the background and just kind of learn, but he is another offensive mind in your meeting rooms. How much have you used him? Yeah, I mean, you know, he's obviously in every meeting and and uh, and all that with us when we're watching film. And so, you know, we'll watch a play and, hey, Coach, what do you think about this? Or um, because obviously he's getting to know our players and getting to know our staff. Um, but having the ability, obviously, he was very creative on offense at, at Kansas and Buffalo. And, um, you know, there's some things that, you know, maybe he did that we're doing that he has a really good coaching point on it. Um, so we're able to, to pick his brain. And he's able to ask us questions about things we're doing. Because obviously, you know, come January, you know, we're, we're seeing what this thing looks like and all that with, with him taking over. So. Um, it's been a really good back and forth process throughout this bowl uh, prep with Coach K and you know him observing, but also you know, hey coach, what do you think about this? Or or hey, you got a, a better way to maybe state something or or teach something? Or because at the end of the day, we're all teachers, so you're always looking for the best way to for it to connect with our our kids. Um, so it's been awesome having them in there. All right, next we'll go all the way back on the left. For Ty and Jay Wan, um, just throughout your your film study the last couple of weeks, I'm curious how do, how does a Pete Golding defense go about challenging offenses that you've seen? Um, they multiple, you know, especially with their fronts. You know, you're gonna see some odd, you're gonna see some four down, a lot of twists, a lot of movement, uh, trying to decipher. Are they gonna be a, a quarter team? Uh, are they gonna be a man team? Cause, you know, play a little bit more man that last game. So. Um, I think they still trying to figure themselves out a little bit. Just watching when you take that minute transfer, even this late in the season, trying to get do what's best for the players. And I think those guys trying to find their feet. All right, next over here, third row on the right. Okay. Uh, this question is for, for Drew. Um, Drew and, and Nick, um, playing Ole Miss and, and being coming from the Big Ten like you guys are, um, is, there, is there kind of a – is there more juice going into it, knowing that you're, you're playing at SEC school and kind of their reputation? And, and how do you guys go about that as far as motivation? Um, yeah, um, we're excited about it. You know, Ole Miss is a good team, um, really good defense, really good offense. Both sides of the ball are really good. But, you know, we're excited. Um, we're in SEC territory. Coach Franklin always preaches about that. But, you know, we're ready. Um, we're taking it one day at a time. Um, always had that 1% one, 1 mentality. You get better every day. So, like, we're excited. We just got to get ready to play. Yeah, I mean, I'd echo that. Um, obviously, Ole Miss is a really good team, and they're from a really good conference as well, but that doesn't change the fact that they're a good team. It doesn't matter what conference they come from. Um, they're a very solid team on both sides of the ball, so we got to do our best and go out and execute the, the game plan that co coaches have put together the past couple of weeks. And, um, you know, if we do that, I think we have a good shot. All right, we got time for one or two more. Where are we going next? All right, let's go left side over here, row four. Uh, for for Drew and Nick, um, you know, what did you get beyond coming down here and, and, and winning a game? You know, in terms of your development personally, what did you guys want to get out of these extra practices, having this opportunity to get more time on the practice field? You know, how are you guys kind of approaching that from, I guess, more of a, a big picture perspective in your development? Yeah, for me, it's all about reps. Um, that's how I've always been. I've been like, I, I want to get as many reps as I can. Um, so it doesn't matter the play. It doesn't matter if it's a run and pass. I want to try to be perfect in everything I do. And the, the more reps I get in that is uh, the better for me. So I, I just try to take every rep as serious as I can. Uh, like game reps, like Coach Franklin always preaches, even if it's a walkthrough, making sure I'm going through my proper footwork, proper reads, um, getting a good mesh point with the running backs on you know, different different run plays from different positions on the like around the quarterback, whether it's under center, um, in the gun, or anything like that. So I just try to make, shake, uh, treat everything like it's a game um, and try to be perfect in every rep. So that's what I've been really focusing on these last couple of weeks of bull prep. Yeah, I'll echo a lot of Drew. Um, like Drew said, um, taking them reps like like the game rep. Um, you know, I just looking at different fronts on um, how they shift on um, the safeties. It was having that mentality. You know. Um, even if you're not practicing right now, just, you know, watching um, all the running backs, how they play, just, you know, just trying to copy them. All right. Go next here, front row on the right. 
All right, so I gotta ask all four of you the important question, Wawa or Sheets? <laughs> sheets. Ooh, I'm kind of split. <laughs> and in college, Sheets came around, so I was a big Sheets guy. But then, you know, they started growing in Florida, and I love the club sandwich at Wawa, so. <laughs> uh, sheets. Wawa. Wow, we're split right down the middle, aren't we? We may have to continue this one tomorrow. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll do it for the first session. We'll have you guys trade places. I'm, I'm a Wawa. So now we've got running back Katron Allen, tight end Theo Johnson, and offensive lineman Caden Wallace. We'll just continue with questions for the players. Again, raise your hand. We'll get you a mic. Where are we going first? All right, back up here at the front row on the right. Hey guys, this question is for all three of you. Is there anyone that you maybe look up to that you model your game after? Uh, yeah, I say um, Le'Veon Bell. Um, I always look at his film, always watching his film um, on YouTube, looking at videos. That's why I say that inspired me as a running back. Um, for me, at least, as a kid, uh, Larry Allen was a major influence for me. Uh, and then more nowadays, I look at a lot of Trent Williams tape and try to get as close as that guy as I can. Yeah, yeah for me, I'd say um, George Kittle. Uh, I just think that, you know, he's a true tight end. Uh, we, we're in a day and age now where a lot of guys say they're a tight end, but they're kind of just a big receiver. Um, so, you know, I really admire how he's able to play all three phases of the game as a tight end. Um, and that's some I aspire to be as a tight end, as a true tight end. All right, let's go right here, second row on the aisle. Do you have him on your fantasy team? Uh, no, I don't. I'm not a big <laughs> fantasy guy. <laughs> uh, this one's for Theo and Caden. Uh, this is for both of you, your last game. What's it, what's it mean to you guys and how much you're putting on the field uh, for the Peach Bowl? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I've tried to make the most of every opportunity I've had at Penn State um, in every single game. Um, so, you know, I'm going to try and do the same thing, just make the most of all my opportunities and just kind of really soak it all in because I know things are going to look a lot different for me a year from now. Um, and I'm just kind of looking forward to having one more ride with my guys. Yeah, kind of going along with what Theo said. I'm just, I've been grateful the whole year for, you know, every opportunity I get to hang out with all my, my teammates, my coaches. Um, and this, this game will be no different. Um, just being grateful, yeah. Over here on the left, on halfway. Uh, for, for Theo and Caden, uh, you know, James has talked a lot about having open lines of communication, uh, you know, in terms of leading up to the bowl and going through the decision-making process. Can you kind of offer some insight into what that looks like, what some of those conversations are like you know, between you and, and James leading up to this? Um, so for me, it kind of started with um, speaking with Coach Howe. Um, you know, just me and him have a really good relationship, so we can have some candid conversations um, that I don't have to worry about going anywhere. Um, and then from there, I'll rely on Coach Franklin to kind of give me some feedback from, you know, what teams are saying and, and kind of his opinions and stuff like that. And then really just go to um, conversations with my family um, and, and figuring out what I feel like is the best decision for me and then going back with Coach Franklin and having another conversation. Um, so. You know, I, I'm blessed to have a really good relationship with Coach Hal and Coach Franklin, um, and we've had, you know, open, uh, open dialogue and, and able to communicate kind of where I'm at and, and how I feel. Um, so, very blessed to you know have a family atmosphere with with this team and feel comfortable enough to have those conversations. And yeah, I'm I'm basically the exact same way. I had a conversation with my family, uh, brought it to Coach Troutwine, brought it to Coach Franklin, and then basically did that cycle again. Just Conversating, yeah. All right, we'll go next here, row two on the left. We've heard a lot of simplicity equals speed the last month or so. What does that mean to each of you guys at your, your individual positions, and how did Coach Howell and Coach Sider kind of make things simple enough for you to do, do a, I, I guess, have a, have, a, have a better feel for, for what you guys are accomplishing the last couple of games? Okay, Tom, let's start with you this time. Oh. Um, I guess that that just mean like playing fast, um, blowing the playbook, just playing fast for real. That's all that means. Uh, I think the big thing with simplicity equals speed is just not having to think too much. 
Um, I think if, if you're trying to think about too many things at once, um, you're not going to play as fast as you're capable of. Um, so it was really just kind of making the game plan uh, a way that you don't have to think as much pre-snap and, and post-snap. It's kind of if it looks like this, you're going to do this. And if it doesn't look like that, then you're going to do that rather than um, thinking about four different things and all these route adjustments and things that uh, if you get certain coverages, you have to do different things. It's It was kind of just making it simple so that you can play as fast as you possibly can. I think that showed up on tape um, week in and week out. Katie? I mean, these guys covered it pretty well. Like, just being able to, you know, focus on the exact game plan we have, uh, which isn't a hard one, and um, just getting after it. It's the best way to do it, speed. Next question. All right, right here, row two. We've heard that you guys have, uh, at least from coaches' perspectives, they've been working with um, Coach Kodolnaki, um as he's arrived on campus and started to work with the team. Have you guys had interac interactions where, with him where you're working out what the offense can look like in certain scenarios, and how has he been helpful there? Um, so right now we haven't gotten into too much of, you know, kind of what things are going to look like from schematics, really. Um, he's kind of just gone over his – his philosophy, and I think this time's really just been for him to kind of get to know us and get a feel for how we do things here at Penn State and um, how we work and just the personnel that he's going to have to work with uh, come in the springtime and the winter. Um, so that's, yeah, kind of how pretty much most of those conversations have gone so far. Anybody else want to tackle that? Uh, he summed that up real good. All right, that's a good answer then. All right, back here on the left. Uh, Katron. Um, you know, this is an opportunity to get, uh, you know, 15 extra practices as a springboard in the next season. What are you looking to get out of, you know, these these weeks of extra practice beyond, you know, game planning and, and beating Ole Miss? What do you want to get out of this personally? Um, I'm just trying to get better. Um, like I said, well, it's another opportunity to do what I love to do. So um, I just want to take advantage of it. Um, just trying to keep getting better each and every day um, throughout practice. Then it was all it, it's all gonna pay off on Saturday. All right, let's go all the way in the back. This question is also for Katron. Uh, Katron, you came to campus. You guys have had nothing but success to double-digit win seasons. Is this what you imagined? You know, go Rose Bowl, Peach Bowl. Is this what you imagined when you when you signed up to play Penn State football? Can you say that again? My bad. You've had nothing but success since you got to campus. Rose Bowl, Peach Bowl, a bunch of wins. Is this what you imagined when you signed up two years ago to come to Penn State? You've had a very successful career in just a short time. Um, yeah, I could say that's what I signed up for. Um, anything I want to go on, I'm a, I always want to win, uh, help my team win. So anytime I can do that, um, I'm very grateful, very thankful um, to do that. Time for a couple more. All right, we'll go back over here halfway on the left. Uh, Theo, uh, Tyler made a decision this year similar to the one that you made last year in terms of coming back. What do you think that he can get out of being back for another year uh, in his development, and what do you think that means for this team as a whole? Yeah, I think uh, Tyler coming back is huge, not only for, for his career, but for our team as a whole, for the morale of the team. Um, I'm super excited for what he's going to be able to do next year. I think he's going to have a monster year. Um, I think the sky's the limit for him and what he's going to be able to accomplish um, personally. And, and I think uh, for our offense, I think Coach K is going to have a lot of fun doing uh, different things to, to work with Tyler and get him open and make plays for him. So. I think he made a really good decision, and I think he's going to have a really good year uh, next year. All right, right side on row three. Well, this one's for all three of you guys. Um, kind of a two-part question. So, number one, what has the Peach Bowl experience kind of been like for you so far in being in Atlanta and also uh, being a Big Ten school? Uh, what are you guys you know, taking from this as far as the matchup going in with Ole Miss, and, and does that give you any extra juice going into the matchup? Caden, let's start with you this time, please. Yeah, I've been having a great time here at the Peach Bowl. Um, I live about 30 minutes away, so being able to spend time with my family on the hol holidays has been awesome. Um, and, um, you know, we all, we love playing SEC opponents. You know, we played Auburn these past two years. So um, being able to host Auburn and then play down here last year and then play down here again is going to be super fun for us. We, we love it. Theo? 
I think uh, my experience at Atlanta has been really cool. Um, you know, I come from kind of a smaller town in Canada, so uh, visiting places like Atlanta and, and L.A. and stuff um, since I've been at Penn State has been really cool to kind of experience new things. Um, you know, we're really looking forward to playing an SEC opponent. Um, you know, we, we talk a whole lot about, you know, how the Big Ten is and how Big Ten football is. Um, and that's something we've kind of talked about this week that, you know, we're the Big Ten and uh, a lot of people have a lot of stuff to say about the SEC, but, uh, you know, we have a different brand of football in the Big Ten. We're looking forward to bringing it down here uh, to the SEC. Um, it's been a great experience um, and a great opportunity because a lot of kids where I'm from, they don't get this opportunity to go to bowl games or even go to college or do things like this. So it's been a great experience, a great opportunity. And about the SEC, I mean, it's a great opportunity to play another team, you feel me? Just do the, play the game, do what I love to do. Um, so it's just a, a great experience. I have a very quick one for Caden and then one for Theo. What was the first thing you door dashed when you got here? Because I know you already did it. So, uh, like I said, I live 30 minutes away. Thank you for this question, by the way. Um, <laughs> My first day I got here, I ordered uh, a large plate of oxtails. Um, and I, I ordered that two more times after that. And then when I got to the city, I ordered, um, it's called Pelicana chicken. And it's like really good. They like sprinkle this stuff on it. It's banging. Did you get Thank your, you. Thank did you, you get for your fish this. yet? I, I'm going to do that on Friday night because it's a Friday night thing. All right, good to know. Uh, Theo, for you, being able to leave a legacy here at Penn State, I know that's been something that's important to you. Mm -hmm. How do you want people to remember you here at this school as you take the next step in your career? Yeah, you know, that's something I've uh, taken a lot of pride in and uh, some I've worked really hard for. Um, you know, the Penn State tight end tradition has been something that's uh, been going on long before I got here. Um, so, you know, coming in here as a young kid, I, I knew that um, you know, it meant some to play tight end at Penn State, and uh, I've worked really hard to, you know, leave the tight end room better than I found it and, and kind of leave a legacy. And, uh, you know, I kind of just want to be remembered as a guy that just worked really hard and, and worked his tail off and kind of gave everything to, to his organization and his team and his teammates um, and was kind of a selfless guy that just worked really hard. That's kind of what the legacy I want to leave here at Penn State. Okay, right here, second. All right, so this question's for all three of you because I asked your teammates, so I got to ask you, Wawa or Sheets? Wawa. Well, I've, only, I've only ever really had Sheets, so I can only say Sheets. Wawa. I, I'm, I'm not keeping the official count, but I think Wawa is now in the lead. All right, time, time for a couple more. Anything, anything else, guys? Last chance. Anybody? Okay, here we go. Winner on the left. Caden, uh, 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 similar to the, the question for, for Theo about you know, leaving a legacy and, and leaving a mark on a program. I mean, for you, um, you know, being a starter for four years and, and having some ups and downs. I mean, when you reflect on this journey, what really stands out to you, and how do you think you can pass that on to some of the younger guys in the room? Um. Honestly, my, my message to the young guys this week has been about perseverance. Um, so like you said, I've had my ups and downs, but being able to stay focused and grind and get better every day is what's really important for me and what's really important for the young guys we have on our squad. So being able to pass down these lessons that I've been able to pick up over the years has been really awesome for me uh, this past season and these past couple of years, being able to instill that wisdom on guys. All right, any more? Yeah, um, this is for everyone. Um, obviously, you guys just got through the regular season where you're playing every week except for the bye week, and then now you have over a month off. Um, obviously, it's nice to sort of recover and heal uh, your body in that time, but how do you make sure that you're staying in rhythm and you're not getting rusty over the long break? Um, Just throughout practice, trying to get better each and every day, 1% um, better, uh, um, having Something that I want to get better at, at practice, so just doing that. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the concept of not playing a game for a couple of weeks and then playing a bowl game <clears throat> has been going on for a long time. So uh, the coaches know 
you know, how to, how to continue improvement even though we're not playing a game. Uh, during practice, uh, during the bowl prep, we do almost exclusively just uh, stuff against our defense, which usually it's uh, more against developmental squad uh, during the season. Um, so we're playing against the best defense every every practice during bowl prep. So, um, like getting rusty is really not an option uh, when you're doing that. Yeah, kind of like what Theo said, they they have it down to a science. So we're we're working hard every day, um, keeping conditioned and you know working out, uh, keeping our technique in, in order. So yeah. All right. Anything else, guys? Last chance. Just under the wire. So close to getting out of here. So close. Obviously, a lot of people in this day and age of college football kind of expect players to opt out because they figure, you know, injury hurts your draft stock. Obviously, last year, Cliff really bumped his stock with his great Rose Bowl performance. And so do you take that looking at this game and say, I can really I can really improve my stock and improve how people, people look at me with this game? And what do you think you can show teams at the Peach Bowl for Theo and Caden, obviously? Um, honestly, I haven't really weighed any of that stuff out. I just kind of wanted to play one last game with my guys, 2023. So, yeah, I don't really know how much um, you know playing is is gonna really help me or, or hurt me. Um, I think you know it's more about you know finishing what we started as a team um, and just being there for the guys. Like I've been here for four years. I've kind of bled and cried and, and done a lot of things with this team. And um, I just want one more opportunity with those guys. And that's why I'm playing the game.